Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. This time, we're going to be going back to an old friend, but a new version of it, and that's the Hubitat Elevation. This is the brand new model that came out with a few months back. I was still operating on the original model that had a separate USB stick that you had to use for some of the Z-Wave and, and other radios, but now they've come out with a new version. So we're going to sit here and do an unboxing and go through a setup and show you some things that weren't available when we first got started with this the last time. want to thank everybody who subscribed so far to the channel. If you haven't, please consider doing so now. And if you get some value out of this video, we'd appreciate it if you would click a like. That way it tells YouTube that more people probably want to see this kind of content. If you're not able to always watch the videos, I do have a podcast available. If you go to techbyteswithronnutter.com and you've got your host of platforms it's available on, because I want to make this as easy as I can for you to get to. And there will be show notes on everything, so there will be affiliate links on all of this kind of thing to make it easier for you to find it so you don't have to go to some of the places that I've had to to find it because some of the devices are not available on Amazon. And if they are, I'll be using affiliate links in them. It will get me a little bit of money for the channel. Won't really change the price that you're on. Anyway, let's go ahead and move forward to the unboxing of the Hubitat Elevation. So, as you see, it's just a nice, tight little box. And we will go here. And it has very brief and to the point card. If you've seen the original model, this is a very... Uh, much smaller device than the original one was. They've got the wall ward or power supply and cable. And then if you don't have a network cable, extra one laying around, then you will have that to work with. We'll, so we'll set just about everything off to the side here and get back to the cable. Now we'll move our, our trusty power strip back in place and we'll take the packaging off the power supply there. Now if you do have a power supply that has some USB ports on it, you might very well be able to to use that. But if you're not, then that's why they send all this there. So there is a USB port in the bottom. And you see this one where the, the Model 1, or Gen 1, if you want to call it that, had an HDMI port, which was never utilized, at least in information that I saw available. So it's got just an RJ45 port, and then you plug your power cable into there. So we'll plug the power cable in. We will plug the network cable in. And I'm trying to figure everything, trying to learn how to do things uh, in reverse. And we'll plug it in, and we should start seeing some lights here at some point. There we go. There's the little blue dot on front. We'll have to give it just a little bit of time to, uh, to find itself. And click, okay, find hubs. Okay, so now we're going to go through the steps that are that are on the card here, and I'm trying to get this to where lay a little bit flat. There's some, some stress on the network cable that I didn't think was going to be there. So let's move over to the portal, and this is portal.hubitat.com that they tell you in the instructions to go to. So we'll scroll down here in the bottom. We'll tell it to find hubs. It's found... That one of the it hasn't gotten through yet. That one probably is not far enough in the booting process. This is the original hub that I've had for a while, and I'm waiting for the other one to come online. And let's give it one more shot here, and we'll see if it's maybe it just wasn't far enough in the process. And am I on the right SSID here? Yes, I am. Okay. Okay, let's try one more time here. After a minute, we'll turn green. 
Ah, okay, it, it turned green. The, I'm sorry, let me switch back here and you'll see it. I was trying to do this when it was blue, so now you see it's gone from blue to, well, green or yellow, depending on your, on your color perception. So we will tell it to find hubs. Ah, there we go. Well, here, you can't see it now. Now it says, my new hub. Well, okay, hang on here. The cable was a little bit loose, but nothing that couldn't be fixed. Okay, so now that it sees my new hub, then we'll go to login and tap enter. And then let's see, we find hubs. Okay. And we could just tap on the new hub since it's now associated with my account and it should there we go and because we've never done anything with it yet then we're going to have to tap on get started yes you've got to agree to the service continue and this is just a tutorial that you'll want to walk through and so much has changed since we did the uh, first version of this and let me and then there's it's going to be interesting to go through this because now with this being the newer hardware should see some other differences as well. So we got one more screen. Yes. And hub name. I'm going to call this one studio because my goal with this one, instead of trying to find, instead of trying to take the one that I've got and take it on the road with me, this one's going to be specifically set to do that. So I'm going to, get it to uh to be a just call, I'll call it studio so it can be wherever it wants to be and save and exit to main and okay now it's good to go so we got a little message waiting for us so let's see platform update available all right and as you can see there's a, a significant version that has happened even though i just got this device so we'll tap on update hub go ahead and agree and this should come through here and you see it's it's already come through at a pretty good rate and it will reboot very briefly at least i'm assuming briefly because the first model sometimes would take a while to to reboot but this one being the newer hardware and everything that should be a little bit faster at least that's a a reasonable expectation So it's going to verify the download here, and that shouldn't take that long. And, and from a travel perspective, this is actually going to be very decent because it's very compact box, and it does have a wired connection, but I'm, one of the things I'll start getting back to is looking at the what it's going to take to have a totally portable system because I ran into some issues, but I kept it was partially my fault or actually mostly my fault because I was sitting there and trying to switch SSIDs and I need to use the same SSID at home and on the road. And that way the box will just find whatever it needs to. And then that should make it a little more straightforward. Now it's still going through and extracting the update and verified it first. So that's good. So we don't, you don't want to try to upload a, a, a corrupted version of code. Hopefully it won't be too much longer, although it is 2.15 2 to 2.17 is a little more uh, of a jump than, than you might think. But as we're getting, okay, it's applying, okay, here we go. So we're getting ready to have another little bit of a dialogue because it's applying the update. Now, I do have a host of devices. The good folks at Dome sent me pretty much everything in their catalog so we'll be going through that and trying different things and using it to set up as uh, I don't want to say home security system because folks from some of the uh, professional providers would probably take issue with that it's more kind of a home monitoring system is probably more appropriate and just see what the options are because if I can come up with a version where I can take it on the road with me then that that has some interesting possibilities especially for those that are on the road a little bit and would like to have some of the uh the creature comforts from home so it's still kind of running through the 
process here. It's applying the update. Okay, now the box has gone. Let me shift back over here, and you can see the box is, well, it's still on the, the blue status. Now, this is what you see. Whoops, here we go. Shift over here. Now, once it does reboot and get to a certain point, then this is the kind of screen that you can expect to see, and it will give you pretty much a good idea of where things go. And I never, I was looking for the LED on the front to change status and it really pretty much stayed on blue. So if it rebooted, it was a, what I'll call more of a warm boot than, than anything else. And as, as typical with the, uh, what I'll call the progress gauges or gas gauges, they'll sit there and kind of park for a while and you kind of wonder what it's doing. And as soon as you look away, then you will see it do a little bit more. So, and, I, and I'm trying to to do these videos in a way to where, because some of you address some concerns that, or raise some concerns that you want to see things, the whole process through. So I'm doing, trying to do the videos to address exactly that. So you can see kind of the time delay and how long things are going to take. And this is the first time I've updated to this level of code. So you can see it jumped from 25 to 65 pretty quick. So whatever the update was didn't take that long to apply and okay now it did change status here to uh to what they're calling uh okay blue is when it's ready to discover and okay they really said it's that's green or yellow you pick your your version of it so we'll wait for it to come back online here But there really is, is you should, you know, if you're going to be able to use this traveling, and even if you're not, if you have a cabin or travel trail you took where you're not able to have some sort of internet access, then this is a, a very ideal device because you, after you do the initial setup and do a firmware update, you really don't need an internet connection if you're running with all local devices. If you... Uh, are doing things like tying into Alexa. Okay, that's going to require internet access. And that's some things we'll start looking at with this newer box because I've got some things that I'm going to be looking to try here that I simply didn't with the others because that was my production box. And I was trying to figure out, did I go get another one? And then by the time I kind of came back to revisiting this and I'm, I'm waiting for the light to change, then they came out with newer hardware and talked with the folks at Hubitat and they agreed that going to a... Uh, newer box was uh, the better way to to go and while we're waiting for the box to kind of get back on its feet again we'll go back over here and we'll go out of that we will go to the Hubitat app now this is something that you can get uh, directly off of the uh, Google Play Store or the uh, should be available on iPhone as well. And let's tell it to search because it didn't know about the other one just yet. Okay, there's the My New Hub. Okay. And so it's found it now. So it is, it's gone back to the color that it needs to be to be seen on the system. So what we'll go through and do here is tap on My New Hub. We'll get started. Yes, we'll agree to the terms of service that we've already agreed to and go back through all this. Again, hopefully we don't have to do any more. Okay, for some reason, I guess the update and code wiped that out, wiped out the name that I put in. And we'll put the... Oh, come on here. I didn't want to put the one period to go in here. We'll drop that and say exit to menu. And now when we go back through here and do this, if we go to, okay. Okay, well, let's go look at hub details. So you see there's, there's its Mac address and it even gives you some voice options. So there's a lot that we're going to get to go through here as 
as time goes on and it well it's it's even picking up uh local time and it's well, let's let's humor us here and even though we've gone through one update let's check for another update probably won't okay no update available okay that's fine uh damage database detected okay well i really don't think it's Oh, now I know why I was doing local discovery and, okay, so we will go back here. It's still going on the home hub. Okay, now we'll go to studio. There we go. There's how I selected it. So mobile devices. So now it's at a point where we can start working with some of the newer devices. I just had to learn how to shift it in the uh, app because this is the first time I've had two hubs online at the same time. So that's where we're going to stop at this point. Just I wanted to walk you through the, the unboxing because I haven't done those videos before. And I'm going to start doing those now that I've got the kind of setup in place that I can literally show you as it's happening as well as bring in uh, direct real-time images from either my smartphone and I've also got a uh, tablet and a laptop that I'm going to be trying to work with well instead of shooting the video separately and then bringing that in place but I'm so I'm trying to give you a, a better experience with things so we'll be uh, I've got to get all my devices together and reset some so that they're ready to go in because I'm going to have some things operating a little bit different uh, since I'll have a separate studio deal and there's a, a separate studio uh, habitat and this is another thing to bring up you can have more than one there's nothing to say that you have to have only one if so if you have something uh, that a room that's a very specific set of needs why not have another one it's just a matter of switching over to it in the app and you can see here that it's very uh very straightforward to uh to do and it obviously is meant to handle multiple hubs so kudos to the folks at habitat that were thinking about that so that's going to be our stopping point right now. Again, thank you for watching all the videos that I put out on the channel. I'm going to be, I've already been working on a new schedule for, for 2020, and I've already got the next two, almost three months planned out. But anytime you've got something specific you'd like me to try, if I've got the hardware already, I'll do whatever I can to kind of put that one up towards the top of the list and then work the rest of the content that I've got in place and make it easier for you. If you would also, in addition to this podcast, to this video being available as a podcast, you can also get it as an Alexa flash briefing. So here in just a bit, you will see a video here or here or somewhere as I get through used to pointing in the reverse, other videos that I have done on smart home technology. So give those a try. If you don't see what you're looking for, please let me know because I want to make sure I'm producing content that's going to be as helpful for you as it can be. So thank you for your time and we'll talk to you soon.